Hello and welcome to Lunchtime Politics on Channels Television. I'm Millicent Walker on the news this hour. The presidential elections tribunal resumed today with the APC and President Buhari's lawyers calling witnesses to the box. And again, more reviews of the 2019 elections as the Coalition Observer Group's fought legal framework, logistics and operations strategy of INEC and use of security apparatus by political elite. And there appears to be a legal stalemate in Edo State with the stance of the state government on the decision of the Senate for the governor to issue a fresh proclamation letter to reconvene the state assembly. everyone and it's back in the courtroom yet again that we begin uh, this morning the presidential elections tribunal it takes center stage at the appeal court premises in abuja today the lawyers to the all progressives congress and president buhari have called witnesses to the box to defend the victory of their clients at the 2019 presidential elections counsel to president Mohamed buhari continued his case by calling the first witness of the day mr oshedain de henry the witness is the deputy registrar in charge of the uh, school's register, registration of the West African School Examination Certificate for Nigeria. Well, the witness confirmed that the president wrote the WIAC examination alongside 18 other students. He also answered in the affirmative that the president sat for seven subjects and had five credits, all of which he said happened in 1961. The lawyer, amongst other uh, things, called on other witnesses as well. But let's get a sense of the atmosphere and the mood at the tribunal. Our correspondent Amaka Okafor is live for us. Amaka, what more do we know now? President Muhammad Buhari continued his defense in the petition filed by the People's Democratic Party and its presidential candidate, Al Hadi Atikwa Abubakar, by calling additional four witnesses. The first witness was subpoenaed for the West African Examination Council, and he is Mr. Sonde Oshidende, who said he is the Deputy Director of Administration for Nigeria. The witness on the um, examination in chief confirmed that the result from Cambridge is indeed a reflection of the President's scores in the West African Examination Council exam, which he when he took the exam. He also confirmed that scored five credits after the said exam, but under cross-examination, he was asked to compare the results from the Cambridge International Education um, Certificate, which belonged to the president, and the WIAC attestation of results, and he um, indicated that on the WIAC result, the, the president did sit for eight um, subjects, while on the um, Cambridge result, the president was said to have sat for seven subjects in which he scored five credits. After uh, Mr. Oshidende, the, the counsel to the president, Mr. Wole Olanikwek, also called a, a senior special assistant to the president on domestic affairs, Mr. Abba, um, Mohamed Abba, who testified that he had known the president for 30 years and that if he sees the president anywhere or if he sees a picture of the president he will be able to identify the president. He was then given a, a, a picture which had been tendered to the tribunal yesterday where he indicated that the president was one of those on the picture from his secondary school graduation in 1961. Two other witnesses who were word agents during the election all uh, um, testified to the, uh, all, all told the tribunal that the president was, uh, these calls attributed to the president during the election were the true picture of what happened during the election in MENA, Niger State. All right, many thanks, Michael Kafel, with the latest. We'll continue to fill you in on the latest of the proceedings at that uh, petition tribunal. Elsewhere, the last may not have been heard on the conduct and outcome of the 2019 elections as the electoral umpire, INEC, they are threatening to blacklist its staff who were accused of corruption during the 2019 general elections. And this is coming on the heels of preparations for the conduct of governorship elections in Kogi and Bayelsa states in November. 
The Commission's Head of Legal Services, Mrs. Mayor Guamuche, mentioned this at a meeting with members of the civil society organizations in Abuja to assess INEC's preparedness for the governorship elections in the two states. Eliza, we're using ad hoc staff from NYSC and, um, and universities, but we intend to have uh, blacklist those who have not done very well in the elections. That's what we intend to do. A few weeks ago, a foreign election observer group gave a damning report on the conduct of the 2019 elections and what needed to be done going forward. Well, yet another report is out this time around by a coalition of election observation groups the Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room. Well, the group says the 2019 general elections failed to meet the requirements for a credible election as the Independent National Electoral Commission went into the exercise without fixing the shortcomings identified with the 2015 elections. While well, speaking at a news conference in Abuja, the civil rights group insists that the polls were characterized by violence, intimidation and militarization. According to the group, the 2019 elections also recorded a higher percentage of voter apathy when compared to that of 2015. Without fixing the shortcomings identified in the 2015 electoral law, INEC went into the 2019 elections already constrained from doing much to rectify them. While most people agree that biometric identification of voters would improve election credibility, there was no law making it mandatory. Similarly, there was no law supporting the electronic transmission of results from polling units. In the end, INEC operations fell short of its identified role and obligations in the threshold document. Logistical and operational challenges marred the credible conduct of the elections. More so, the election day was characterized by localized incidents of voter intimidation, ballot box smashing, and destruction, and general voter apathy. In the report, Situation Room points out that from the lapses noted during the observation of the 2019 general elections, it is its conclusion that the 2019 election failed to meet the threshold for a credible election and worries that this poses serious conse consequences about the future of elections and quality of democracy in Nigeria. Elsewhere, the impasse in the Edo State House of Assembly continues with a new twist and yet another round of argument between the Senate and the Edo State government. The lawmakers in the upper chamber made a final pronouncement concerning the controversy by asking the governor of Edo State, Mr. Godwin Obafiki, to issue a fresh proclamation letter on the 7th Edo State House of Assembly. In addition to this, the lawmakers also mandated the clerk of the House of Assembly to inform all 24 elected members via electronic and print media of the new inauguration date after receiving such from the governor. The Senate also resolved that if a fresh proclamation is not issued within a week, the National Assembly shall take over the functions of the Edo State House of Assembly. These resolutions were contained in the report of the Senate's ad hoc committee, which investigated the crisis in the Edo House. The proclamation letter issued by the Edo State for the inauguration of the Edo State House of Assembly was not in tandem with known parliamentary best practices. No video clip or pictorial evidence clearly showing the inauguration of the 7th Edo State House of Assembly was provided by the clerk to the Edo State House of Assembly to this committee. 11. The vote and proceedings of the inauguration day, Monday 17 June 2019, as well as that of Monday 24 June 2019 and Wednesday 3 July 2019 of the Edo State House of Assembly all adjourned till Wednesday 17 July 2019 as the next legislative day. That the Edo State Governor should issue a fresh proclamation letter for the proper inauguration of the 7th Edo State House of Assembly. Two, that the clerk to the Edo State of Assembly should, in line with previous practice, formally inform all the 24 members elect of the inauguration of the State House of Assembly upon receiving the proclamation letter through media adverts in both print and electronics in conformity with parliamentary best practices.
Well, but the Edo state government is insisting that the order of the Senate to the governor will not stand. The state government is alleging that the National Assembly is operating under complete disregard to a valid injunction from the Federal High Court restraining parties from interfering in any manner with the activities of the Edo State House of Assembly. The Edo State government's response is contained in a statement signed by the Secretary to the state government, Mr. Osaro Dion Oge, who also alleges that the Senate appeared to have very scant regard for the principle of separation of powers as enshrined in the Constitution by giving directives to a governor of a state who is certainly not subject to the supervision of the National Assembly. The statement says, quote, It has always been the contention of the Edo State government that the power to issue proclamation for the inauguration of a House of Assembly is set out in Section 105, Subsection 3 of the Constitution, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria was duly and completely complied with, and it is not within the power of the governor to recall same once issued or to perform the same act multiple times. Once the governor issues a proclamation letter, his job is done. End of quote. The Edo State government maintains that the state is not a colony and that they will uh, take all necessary steps within the ambit of the law to defend and validate their position on the matter.